Crossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. I'm not good with numbers, so I brought someone else on who knows what they're talking about, Grassy. And a common question that pops up in the comments or sliding into my DMs are, Tom, what is the Packers cap? And then I have to go and I have to look it up and pretend I know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, this number. However, today our guest actually knows what he is talking about when it comes to the salary cap has gotten way more in depth uh, in one of my major weaknesses and really uh, has made some great content on the Twitter machines. And that is Mr. Ken Ingalls. Thank you so much, Ken, for coming on the show. Greatly appreciated. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And so I, I got to, we were talking a little bit before we, we went live. And by live, I mean still pre recorded. And we were talking about like how this isn't your, your full time gig informing the masses about the salary cap of the Green Bay Packers. Can you speak to me on how you got invested in this? And how, like, what about this did you find so fascinating? Sure. So, I, I'm a Packer fan, always have been, born and raised in Wisconsin, love them, right? And I've always been the type of guy who's interested in following what the Packers are up to in the offseason, you know, when they're not playing their 16, soon to be maybe 17 games. And um, I, I think I even created my Twitter account to follow beat writers like a decade ago. That's all I use it for, right? Yeah. But in my day job to help pay the bills, I am an accountant. I'm a CPA. I used to do taxes. I do corporate accounting now. And so you kind of blend all that together, <laughs> that my love of the Packers and what I do for a living and that I thoroughly enjoy knowing what the Packers are up to. It just kind of landed in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I feel like, too, you know, that's one of the things like you're talking about, like beat writers and stuff. And obviously, like they have like inside scoops or they're sharing their opinions and thoughts on like what the Packers are going to be able to do, whether it's, you know, free agencies or trades or what have you. And I think that you have a unique perspective when you're walking into this, because, I mean, I have people messaging me every day that are like, hey, what about this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy? And, and you kind of gonna provide of like, hey, here's what's like realistic when you're seeing a million articles going like, here are the, the people, the targets that the Green Bay Packers should be looking at. I mean, I can imagine you looking at those and be like, yeah, they can't afford that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Right, right. And that's kind of how some of this kind of started for me too, where I would read those same things and be like, is that even possible? <laughs> and then so I just kind of created my own smaller spreadsheets and then over time they grew and they grew and they grew and we're at, <laughs> yeah. we've arrived to where I'm at today where I kind of have a, a full picture of everything that's going on. Yeah, there you go. And that makes sense. So last year, obviously the Packers, they, they, they had some money burning a hole in their pocket as they went. I mean, I mean, can we do I'm just imagining you've been a Packers fan your whole life, obviously, right? You were talking about before. So that's been a while. I've been a Packers fan since I was seven years old. You know, we haven't spent like that in free agency in quite some time. And now I think, you know, there's a little bit of that itch that Packers fans are being like, oh, man, we went so long without spending in free agency. Now that we did it and look how successful we were, I want more of that. And I feel like you're starting to see some of that from the fan base. of be like, this is why we want to go after some of these big name guys. Right, yeah, free agency is a hell of a drug, right? Oh, um, yes. We, we, we didn't have it for so long, and we, we the, the fans were almost begging for it. And then we got it in spades <laughs> last offseason. <laughs> yes. And, you know, this offseason, things are going to be a little bit tighter. Um, doesn't mean they can't make some moves and, you know, dip their toes in a little bit more, but they're not going to do the full, you know, cannonball off the off the diving board this season, I don't think. Yeah, and, and so to get into that, I mean, you've posted a whole lot on Twitter, and which if you haven't, the link is in the description down below to go check out Ken's Twitter to see what we're talking about. Um, that obviously there's some moves that the Packers can make, whether it's releasing some guys like Brian Bulaga or Jimmy Graham um, or even like Lane Taylor, and you're talking about 
you know, then potentially being able to go after some of the big guys. I mean, Brian Gutekunst has talked about, you know, potentially going after guys like Corey Littleton, who are obviously going to cost around something where like $12 million a year, I think the last time I saw was his estimated contract. And then, you know, there's people who are talking about Austin Hooper, that his name has been associated with the Packers, who would be another big, you know, spending uh, free agent, which that'd be about $11 million a year. So if I were to ask you in the most non-complicated way, can you explain to the audience how much money, how much cap that the Packers actually have that they could spend on free agency and what it would take to actually get to that number. So whether that is like cutting players, you know, um, or re-signing deals or restructuring deals, et cetera. Sure. I guess in the, to to keep it high level, um, right now, I look and I think the Packers have just under $7 million that they can reasonably spend in the off season and not overcommit themselves to things that they need to do the rest of this off season yeah. or sorry, the, the rest of the regular season in order to make moves and go out and um, assign some guys. You also mentioned maybe moving on from Jimmy Graham, moving on from Lane Taylor. If we do that and we account for the draft and all the other things that we need to do this season. I think the Packers are going to end up with about $18 million that they can actually go out and spend, right? And they'll have plenty left in their pockets to do things during the regular season. Mm. That $18 million equates to three Preston Smith from last off season. Gotcha. So Preston Smith was able to sign, you know, it's a $13 million deal. But the way the Packers like to structure it, where they kind of can push some money um, off to the future, mm-hmm. they only cost them six million dollars, you know, for the salary cap accounting tricks. Guys like myself who can structure things this way or know how to structure things this way, Preston Smith came out to be six million dollars. So I like to look at it as for twenty twenty, if they move on from Graham and they move on from Taylor, they've got three Preston Smiths worth of money to play with. Gotcha. So go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's incredibly helpful because, again, I mean, we talk about, you know, even people who aren't like super duper well versed in the cap, like they look at guys like Ron Wolf and they're like, I don't know what he's doing, but he makes the numbers work. Right. Like they like the back office, they make it work somehow, some way. And, and I think that, you know, when you're talking about like the free agency in particular, especially when you start looking at like those day one guys, like they're the ones who are going to cost a ton of money, you know, in terms of like, you know, three to four year contracts, but you're looking at like $12 million, what have you. But as you were just talking about with Preston Smith, you know, he can sign for a lot of money. However, you know, that money is not necessarily coming out from this year is because you can restructure the money in a way where it doesn't hurt as bad, at least, you know, immediately. Right. You you, you push the pain down the road a little bit. And, Especially now in an environment where if a new CBA gets signed, where the salary cap can rise significantly in the next couple of years, the amount of budget that the teams can play with can go up just astronomically in future years. It's smart to structure on those uh, mm-hmm. deals that way, where they're small up front and they get bigger as time goes on. Now. Uh, so we were talking about guys like Jimmy Graham and, and Lane Taylor, you know, and, and so if they, you know, are dust in the wind and they, and they wind up going away, you know, there has obviously been talks, you know, there's like rumors, but it's all rumors at this point uh, about Brian Bulag and re-signing him. If the Packers were to re-sign him, you know, I, if I'm not mistaken, you're, you estimated what about like $10 million, I think, if I'm not mistaken, like one of your projections um, with your cap. Yeah, I, I think it'll be more like, I have a scenario out there um, where it's three years, thirty-five million, and that's about um, eleven point six seven per year. Gotcha. For Balaga, if they were wanting to, you know, I, I, that's at least a starting point that I could see. It could go up, it could go down, but that's just kind of a reasonable number I was able to kind of put together. Gotcha. So if that's the case, so if we are just like you know, not trusting Veldir, you know, cause he's like, hey, guys, I wanted to be retired. Please leave me alone. Like, you know, if we, if right. we wind up just, uh, you know, move or if we wind up, I'm sorry, if we wind up getting blog and we wind up re-signing him, how much wiggle room does that leave for us left to potentially go after some guys in free agency? Like, does that drastically diminish, uh, our, you know, I guess mobility within free agency? Well, I've always, I- I've always kind of had the opinion, looking at the cap situation, looking at the guys who are rumored 
to kind of go to the Packers. I think that they need the Packers are going to decide what they're going to want to do with Bulaga first, and then that kind of opens the door for the rest of the decision. Mm-hmm. I always said that it's, I think that they can sign two kind of bigger names, so two Preston Smiths type of contract, and Brian Bulaga would be you know the equivalent of a Preston Smith, right? So if you sign Bulaga, that means that maybe you can sign one more guy that you know whether it's a Littleton, whether that's a Hooper whether it's um, a wide receiver that's on the market that people like. Sure. Um, and then that last, you know, I said they can have $18 million, which I equate to three Preston Smiths. That last Preston Smith can be kind of divvied up multiple ways. That could be maybe like a Mercedes Lewis coming back, maybe yeah. a Tremont Williams coming, coming back, where a few of those guys add up to that total cost. So I think two, two bigger contracts is going to be a reasonable – move this offseason um if the packers don't do any accounting tricks to make more money and then a few other you know maybe smaller guys older veterans um guys coming back on minimum deals that they can maybe combine to fill the rest of that out yeah i mean and that makes complete and total sense and and looking at the cap i don't know do you when you're looking at the cap do you just go from a year by year basis. So for example, like you're looking at the 2020 season now, right? Like you're looking at the upcoming season. Have you looked into the future at, you know, what the cap is going to be for the Packers and if they're going to be, because a lot of people have been mentioning, especially, you know, Aaron Rodgers critics who are just like, Oh, they're paying them so much money. You know, as years go on, obviously Rodgers is going to get paid more money, you know, just because of the structure of the deal. And so I don't know if you've looked into seeing like, are the Packers going to be limited on who they're going to be able to sign in the future? Obviously we can't predict everything, but based on the current deals that they have in place. So like all the free agent signings that they did last year, obviously having Rogers, Devante, um, Bakhtiari, all those like big names who are on the team. Is, is that going to hurt the Packers, you know, financially in the long run? I wouldn't say hurt, but I think things will get a little bit tighter. I haven't done a full kind of scope for to- next year, 2021 yet. There's a lot of moving parts there, especially with um, kind of the uncertainty with whether or not the players union is going to adopt the new CBA. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, you know, I remember how I talked about how Preston Smith, he signed for $13 million a year. Yeah but he only cost six in the first year. Well, that just means the latter years are going to be a little bit more painful. Of course. And that's the same for all four of those guys that signed last year, right? All those fun free agents that we went out and got. <laughs> Packers were super excited about Packers fans. were super excited about, um, you know, that pain will be a little bit more in those future years. Same thing for Rodgers, too. So Rodgers yeah. has his, – his cap number goes up significantly yes. after this year. And so while I think things will be – tighter the cap like the top line budget how much teams are going to be allowed to spend is projected to go up significantly if um, the new cba is passed so i think that offsets a lot of that worry but the packers have a lot of homework to do because they've got a lot of big names in 2021 that are going to be free agents you're looking at aaron jones jamal williams both those guys both those running backs what do you do there uh, kevin king uh, Kenny Clark, that's the elephant in the room too. Like yes, he, he is even for a, a mega extension. Mm-hmm. And how are they going to make that work? And more guys on the offensive line, Corey Winsley and David Bakhtiari. What do they do there? And yeah. those are just like your your marquee starters as of today. Who knows what tomorrow brings? Yeah, I mean, you bring up a great point. And this is one of those things, right, that I would say that a, like the casual fan – you know, this is just like another layer of it. And I can completely see like how this becomes like absolutely fascinating. Like, listen, I'll be the first one to say the the time where I really started getting into like the cap, you know, and obviously not in the same level as what you're talking about, but at least like being aware of it and how it works and, you know, kind of looking at it, you know, the trends for teams, what have you is when the Vikings signed Kirk Cousins for $84 million <laughs> guaranteed. I looked at that and I looked at some of their upcoming free agents. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Because I'm like, Kirk Cousins, I don't think he's going to be that good. At least not $84 million guaranteed good. And you can see that, like, it is, it's starting to hit their cap a little bit harder, you know, and and they're going to have to start making some tough decisions, especially when they're paying, you know, two marquee wide receivers. If they want to, you know, not have a ton of, 
uh, attrition on the defensive side as well, you know, it's it's going to be challenging for them to to kind of avoid the cap train. Right, absolutely. And I think the Packers have historically done a really good job of taking care of the cap and not allowing themselves to get themselves in trouble. A lot, you'll hear a lot of fans talk about, we need to go all in. We need to go for it, right? But signing a guy doesn't guarantee a Super Bowl. And to your point, look at what the Vikings are dealing with now. They yep. spent a lot of money. They thought that they were just a quarterback away. Mm-hmm. They threw a ton of money at them, all guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And it's not quite working out as they hoped. And now they're running into trouble. They just have, they have to cut guys just so that they're not over the cap, right? Because yeah. you're not allowed to go over the budget at all. And once the season, uh, the new season starts on March 18th, mm-hmm. and you cannot be over it. So they had to cut guys, and they're going to have to continue to cut guys in order to field a roster. And you know these are going to be probably core members of their team, veterans that they're going to either have to find trade partners for, yep. or just straight dump these guys and have some other team pick them up that have managed the cap maybe a little bit better. Yeah, and and you know what, this is like one of those like decade old arguments, right? When you're talking about, we were mentioning Ted Thompson in the beginning and kind of his unwillingness to really dive into free agency a whole lot. And you had fans who were just like, come on, like, you know, give Aaron Rodgers some help or, you know, like again, for, for a while that he wasn't participating in that. But you look around the league and look at how many of those free agencies don't work out. Like if, if we're sitting here and Zadarius and Preston Smith as a signing don't work out, this is a very different conversation and maybe we're not talking about going as hard in free agency, but you've seen it time and time again where you spend all of this money in free agency and it doesn't either one, get your team to where it needs to be or two, the guy just just doesn't play up to the standards. I mean, you look at the Rams right now, you know, talk about a team right. that has mortgaged their future. They don't have a draft, a first round draft pick. What is it until 2021 or 2022? I, I, they, they don't have one yeah, for a while. Years. Years. Yeah. Like years. And they just get a guy like Jalen Ramsey over who now they're going to have to pay a buttload of money to. They're paying already guys like Todd Gurley and Jared Goff and these big time players. And like, they're going to be in cap hell. And, 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 you know, you look at the Broncos from a few years ago too. Like they're usually the staple. They spent a lot of money on Peyton Manning. They spent a lot of money in that defense. And you know, they, they, they did it. They were like, we did it. We won a Super Bowl. And then a lot of those guys just wound up leaving because they couldn't afford them anymore. And like, that just shows the importance of like, you have to take care of the cap. Absolutely. Like the whole Denver Broncos thing, that's a fantastic example because that's the example of it actually working out. Right. Yeah. They were a quarterback away. They brought in Peyton Manning at the very end of his career. Yes. wasn't the same guy, but it was enough to get him past the finish line, right? And they also manipulated a lot of their existing contracts. Von Miller's a guy that they redid his deal a few times to create short-term space. But yeah, now they're living the hell of it. And, and it's unavoidable. You can only play those games for so long to create these short-term fixes. I call it using the cap credit card, right? Mm. So you get what you want now. You get all these fancy, shiny free agents. You get all these nice players. But down the road, you're like, oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I've talked to, listen, I've talked to. The the, the bill comes due. Yes. Yeah. And I've talked to Broncos fans and they're like, it's worth it. Because they got a Super Bowl out of it. So they're like, you know what? Don't care. I don't care how long we're in cap hell for because we got a Super Bowl. But you look at a team like the Vikings or like the Rams who have spent a ton of money. And now you're, they're like, oh, Oh no, because they don't have a ring to show for it. And like, it almost puts these, like, obviously, you know, every single season you want to win a Super Bowl, but I feel like it almost puts even further expectation on it because then that window starts to close a little bit more every single year. Cause you're like, Oh man, if this doesn't pan out, you know, and, and I wanted to ask you about that. You know, what you start to see in this league, like you look at, you know, what teams are really, really successful, Right, you have the you have the Patriots because Tom Brady just takes like team friendly deals and they pull you know garbage out of the streets and are like, hey, you want to be our cornerback? And they're like, yeah, and they turn out to be really good for that for that team. But they manage the cap well. But you look at you know teams that 
are successful. Like, so the Chiefs right now, they didn't have to pay Patrick Mahomes, still on a rookie contract. The Ravens with Lamar Jackson, still on a rookie contract for their QB. They will be eventually paying a ton of money. But can you speak to, like, how important it is, you know, when you get a franchise quarterback that within those first, like, you know, four years of their deal, that's really when you have the most flexibility because you don't have to sign that person to a ridiculous contract. And then after that, you're kind of binded a little bit. Right. So the current CBA that w- that the players have now with the rookie pay scale, where you get these when, 10 years ago, if you remember, you would sign first round draft picks and they would get these mega deals, like yeah. $40 million guaranteed. And it, it'd be really damaging to the long-term health of the cap. The current CBA has the rookie slotting system where these rookies come on dirt cheap. Mm-hmm. And that's going to change the game where you have the Kansas City, the Baltimore's, the Seattle, early, yeah. you know, the, the Seattle teams earlier um, with Russell Wilson, uh, Dak Prescott, was another Dak. example, where, yeah. right, where you have these teams and they're like, hey, this quarterback that we took a total, because the draft, especially with quarterbacks, are a crapshoot. Sure. And if it if you do well and you're like, hey, we got a guy and he's, he's legit, you see teams do more of that mm-hmm. almost kind of all, not fully all in, but they can go more all in because if you can get a guy who's only making a million or $2 million who can be an MVP level quarterback, you can load the defense and you can load them with playmakers and offense and you can go, you know, you can kind of go for it. But as soon as he gets paid, watch out because you're kind of seeing that, you know, with Seattle for a little bit where yeah. as soon as Russell got his deal, you know, the the whole legion of boom, they're all gone. Yep. Right. All those guys who are the core, who are who are all over ESPN, who are all over. You know, it's all you heard about was this amazing defense, and all those guys are playing on the teams right now. Yeah. Uh, because you can't pay everybody, and so there's that whole: can you take advantage of it? You know, catch lightning in a bottle and go for it. But again, it's it's hard. It's hard to win a Super Bowl. There is no formula. Yeah, that is going to guarantee success. But that one, that one gives a lot of flexibility. Yeah, uh, because of because these quarterbacks, if they can come out and perform so well and for so cheap, it's it's hard not to want to do that all in. Yeah, I mean, you even look to like teams like the Bills, right? So, like, you know, Josh Allen right now, like, they're able to go out and they're able to get, you know, some free agents, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're dabbling in free agency this year as well. Um, and, and I think that this is just a point that, like, really needs to be driven home because a few years ago, like, just as a, a person who was casually paying attention to the cap, I looked at Jordy Nelson's numbers and I looked at Randall Cobb's numbers, and then we re-signed Devontae Adams, and I'm like, okay, this is not sustainable because you have three guys who are making over $10 million as wide receivers. You can't pay that money. You can't spend $30 million on your wide receivers in one year. And like, that's one of those things. Like I went on and I was like, listen, Jordy's going to be gone. And Randall's going to most likely be gone right after him. And everyone's like, Oh, you can't do that. Whatever. And I'm like, no, this is not my decision. Like, just look at the numbers. And like, there's some times where, you know, you get down to it. Football is a business and sometimes you just have to make the numbers work. And, you know, guys that you love and you absolutely want to see can stay on the team. They just financially can't. Right. And I remember last, or not last offseason, two offseasons ago, that you were talking about that with Jordy and, and Randall. And I remember looking at it. I'm like, well, who's it going to be? It's one or the other. Yeah. And it's, it's again, like you said it perfectly, it's, it's the cap that dictates this, right? You only have so much money that you can spend. And the salary cap is what I think makes the NFL so great and competitive is that it, it levels the playing field for all these teams, right? But unfortunately, it sometimes means those tough decisions where fan favorites who uh, are going to have to, you know, are, are going to move on and maybe play for other teams that we don't like that, you know, we don't like seeing that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, like, look at Clay Matthews, too, right? Like, Clay Matthews, a lot of people right. love Clay Matthews. And I'm like, listen, I love Clay Matthews, too. Like, you know, another one is Mike Daniels. Yeah, you know, I loved Mike Daniels. And, you know, uh, oh, some, yeah. sometimes it works out, right, in which you're just like, because, again, you know, obviously Mike Daniels is injured. You know, Clay Matthews had a little bit of a renaissance with with L.A. But you look at, you know, other teams, and, like, they have the carousel, and obviously we've given up on guys 
like, you know, like the Micah Hydes of the world who go to Buffalo and do amazing. But I remember Micah Hyde playing on the Packers and like, he was a good player. Don't get me wrong. But like the amount of money that he got from Buffalo, I was like, oh, okay, he can go. Like, because again, there's just times where you're not able to pay that kind of money. And if you're looking at trying to get like these superstars, that's one of the reasons why Ted Thompson was able to be so successful because he, it was the draft and develop. Right. And he gets a lot of flack for that. And because sometimes obviously it doesn't pan out and a lot of it rides on the actual draft itself. But at the same time, you know, it's what's able to keep the cap down. And you look at teams even like the Patriots, most of the time, you know, they don't get it. Whatever player it is, no matter how essential they are to the team, besides Tom Brady, they usually don't get a third contract. Right. Like you look at like the Wes Welkers of the world, you know, the Danny Amendola's of the world. They they let them go or even like your starting left tackles or even your starting, you know, cornerbacks who help you win Super Bowls. They just let them go. And, you know, they are able to just replenish God knows how, but they're able to replenish their roster. And I mean, it's just that's that's just smart, financial, fiscally sound football. Right. And, and let's bring that back home too to the Packers. So you talk about not giving out their contract. The thing I'm looking at that I find the most fascinating with Green Bay is I'm looking at their offensive line. And you don't hear a lot of chit-chat right now about how offensive line is a big need. Yeah. But you look at it. Ryan Balaga this year. Next year, you got Lindsley and Bakhtiari. All those guys. You got three starters on the offensive line who contracts are going to be up either this year or next year. Mm-hmm. And they're all going to be like 30 or 31 years old when the deals are done. Uh-huh. Like... Spoiler alert, Oof. not all three of those guys are going to be back after 2021. No. Like, th- th- there's no way that the Packers can pay each of these guys another third lucrative contract for all of them. Yeah. So who's it going to be? I don't know. But I, I, at least one of those guys won't be back, for sure. So is it going to be Balaga this year? Yeah. Or and we're going to have to make a choice between Lindsay at center or Bakhtiari at left tackle? Uh, so yeah. I would love to know what the Packers plans are. <laughs> but again, these are guys that, that we love. We, yeah. You know, we would love to see them play forever, but sure. father time is undefeated it's true. and they'll always win out. And I, that's going to be the next kind of, that's going to be the next year's version of, is it going to be Jordy or is it going to be Cobb? Yeah. But we're looking at the offensive line. Yeah, and you bring up a good point, too. Like, even if we let Bulaga go this year and, you know, we just have Valdir roll with it at right tackle, like, that's a Band-Aid, right? Like, he's only going to be there for so long because he's, you know, getting up there, too. And, like, you're going to have to draft and develop those guys. And you talk about key players, you know, David Bakhtiari, one of the best left tackles in the game. And you look at Corey Lindsley, who is one of the most underrated players on the Green Bay Packers. In which, like, how consistent is he that he is there nearly every single week? And, you know, that that kind of gets completely brushed over. And you, you look at this and you're like, oh, no, we can go from having a pretty strong offensive line to, oh, we're in trouble real, real quick. And then you start talking about, like you said, too, about signing those other key personnel guys. Like, you know, that's not even talking about Kenny Clark or Kevin King or what or Aaron Jones. Aaron, like, I'm, there, there is a topic that's going to be coming out about Aaron Jones. Because there's questions on, like, do you re-sign them? You know, I listen, I love Aaron Jones to death. I love Jamal Williams. I love them both very, very much. However, you know, there is that, you know, that stigma about re-signing running backs and how that can come up and bite you in the ass real quick. You know, you look at guys like Todd Gurley, right, or David Johnson, and and how that could go wrong very, very quickly, especially you start putting a lot of mileage on them. You know, it it could be problematic, which is why I think it's so important that LaFleur has been talking about, you know, doing this running back by committee just because it's it's saving the wheels a little bit on these guys. Oh, totally. And, like, you, you look back to, like, recent Super Bowl winning teams and you look to see who the running backs were yep. on the roster. Like, last year in the Chiefs, could you name who the starting running back was? Is is that Darren Williams? Yeah, Damian Williams. Damian Williams, yeah, yeah. Under five. Yeah, yeah, but he had 500 yards. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. The year before, Patriots, Tony Michelle. Okay, he was at 900 something yards. Yeah, but he's like, like he's Blount. brand new. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's he's fresh right. out of college. Right. Like, and you and, oh, right. and they've used like Garrett Blunt on some cases because they're like, hey guys, you want to go win a Super Bowl? Like, look at like the Eagles. Like, when they do it, they pick off these random guys of the street that they haven't re signed to lucrative contracts. And yeah, you're 100% correct. Right. 
so there's this there's this mentality out there that you just don't pay running backs, right? And you know, I wonder how much of that is true. I'm not into the deep analytics of this. Um, and there's a lot of guys who that they 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 could crunch those numbers really well. Yeah. But I yeah, like Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, you know. Both those guys could maybe not be back after this year. Mm-hmm. Or you could maybe, you know, see the Packers, do you say, okay, here's the running back contract, and they offer it to both guys, and they say, okay, who wants it? And, you know, and it might not be the most expensive or lucrative contract, yeah. but, you know, maybe maybe we can keep one of them to hang around, but paying guys like top dollar, like hold out running back level money is just doesn't seem like a smart move these days. I mean, you look at the Cowboys because that's what they're walking into right now, right? They just paid Ezekiel Elliott a crap ton of money after already having like that stacked offensive line, you know, who was, they're eventually going to be going away. But and then you look at Dak Prescott, who's going to be making obviously bank most likely with the Dallas Cowboys. And you look at that. That's a lot of money on one side of the ball. And you wonder like well, where the Cowboys don't forget about don't forget about Cooper too. Oh, I actually completely forgot. If they re-sign him, yeah, ouch. So then you have a top running back, a top wide receiver, and a top QB. For if you're completely ignoring the cap, if you're playing on Madden with the cap off, you're like, this is amazing. This is great. I am killing it right now. And you look at where their problems are, and you know their offense put up ridiculous numbers last season. The problem is is obviously with some execution on the offense, but it's the defensive side of the ball of letting up all of those points. And the problem is you can't go out and you can't spend all of that money on defense because it's all wrapped up in your offense. And so that's why so many teams are like, okay, we need to have this balance of like, you know, we have a couple of defensive stars here. We have a couple of offensive stars and try to maintain that balance because if it shifts over to one way, I mean, you're not going to be able to address it. I mean, look at the Packers and all the offensive firepower that they had under Rodgers and look at how many years the defense was just barren. Oh, totally. I think, yeah, there was, I forget the stat, but it was like Ted Thompson took a, a wide receiver every year in the draft for, it was like, I forget how many years straight. Yeah. And that led to great results because we were constantly investing in the offense, mm-hmm. giving weapons. They weren't necessarily first rounders. Yeah. So we had a lot of second, third round guys sprinkled in there. But yeah, the, the defense kind of got the short end of the stick. And now we're seeing kind of the opposite where we're throwing tons of resources at the defense yep. and getting, you know, reloading over there. But then the offense, you know, the wheels kind of spun a little bit last yep. season. So we're hoping to maybe make it a little more balanced going forward. But that's that's the salary cap in general. Like you can't you can't pay everyone, mm-hmm. and you're always going to have. And you, it's not Madden, right? You can't create the you can't play the all Madden team and play against like the Dolphins or the Browns and just roll over everyone. That's just yeah. not how it works. Yeah, and. There's always going to be some areas on the team that need a little bit more work, and then we will try and fix it next year, and then see what happens. And oh, okay, I guess we weren't right here, so let's let's add here. And it's just it's year to year is how it works. And I, I enjoy I enjoy that dance. I enjoy kind of trying to to see the code to the matrix a little bit, and see what, you know, predict yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. No, I think I think it's just absolutely fascinating. And it, and it and it really like this is one of the things I love about football. Like you could be a big like X's and O's person, you can be a casual fan, you could be like super into stats, you could be super into the cap. There's so many different, you know, caveats to try and understand entirely like how every aspect of the NFL work is incredibly difficult. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just it, it's so fascinating, you know, just to kind of take a look at it from a different perspective, like not even looking at the production on the field, just looking at like the plain numbers and being like, hey, this is what can work and this is what can't work. And I think uh, I don't know, I think that's like super duper fascinating. Um, and, and I do have one final question for you. So to take a step back a little bit based on the money that we have, and obviously we're going to find out what goes on with Bulaga and guys like Graham and, and Taylor. Um, but if you were to pick, you know, a guy, you're talking about like making like one big signing or potentially two. If you were to pick, you know, one player that you wanted to see that you knew that we could afford coming out of free agency, who is your guy? Oof. I know. That's a, that's a good question. Um, it would be nice to see a Corey Littleton come on in. Right. And for- provide something that we haven't seen at inside linebackers since 
I have memories of the Packers. Yes. <laughs> um, but it, it, that would be, I think, I think that could work. Um, you know, that that's a name that I just really is intriguing to me. Um, Cooper, I'm, I don't know. Like, I think he's going to reset the, he's going to become the top guy. Oh, at, yeah. Uh, tight end in terms of average dollars for a contract, but is he, should he be? I don't know. But I guess in the absence of other tight ends on the market, yeah. he'll, he's going to get a mega deal, and then Kittle's going to come around and just destroy that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, I guess Littleton would probably be number one in my mind. After that, it's it's tough. It's yeah, I I have I have no idea where they're gonna go. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I mean, it's I, I too. Know, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say like Goody. They asked him, or in in his season ending press conference, and he made it he made it sound specifically like, yeah, we need to take a look at inside linebacker, and so maybe this is the year that it doesn't get ignored yeah. at least from Packers fan perspective that they've just been ignoring the position yeah. for so long and unwilling to invest. So maybe this is the year. Yeah. I mean, like, look, I mean, we're talking about even Clay Matthews, how they're like, we're going to move you to the inside. Cause we have nothing left. Like there's no one else there, you know? And, and yeah, I mean, I think that it's been a constant, constant problem. And like, listen, you know, this is obviously not on like the top of the list, but you look at other positions that are of need. You look at wide receiver, which I think we're just going to address in the draft, you know, because I don't feel like paying Robbie Anderson, you know, $10 million. Um, but you look at, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and you look at also guys though, like we need a backup quarterback. How long have we needed that? And again, when Aaron Rodgers is healthy, no one cares. But when Aaron Rodgers goes down, like he did a few years ago and Brett Huntley stepped in, a lot of people cared about it. And so, I mean, like, that's one of those other things. Like, do you go out and do you sign a Marcus Mariota? You know, do you get someone, who, you know, a, a, a Josh Rosen so that they can you know, at least back up, you know, Aaron Rodgers for a relatively cheap price? They'll eat into the cap, but hopefully not a ton, you know, or or do you literally leave, you know, one hit to Aaron Rodgers and be like, well, this is Tim Boyle's team now. Let's see how this goes. I mean, <laughs> like, that that's the reality of it. Oh, totally. I do like the Mariota. That's kind of the game I, I have. I, I have it penciled in kind of somewhere like, okay, it, <laughs> it, it, this offseason is going to be just phenomenal for yeah. quarterbacks. You don't see anything like it. There are more franchise or former franchise level quarterbacks on the market who are going to be free agents this offseason than there are starting jobs. That's so there are going to be awesome. some guys that, that lose the game of musical chairs. And Mariota could be one of those guys where, you know, hey, you might have not got a starting job, but want to come up to Green Bay and take a reasonable backup deal and play for and you know for the coach that you had last year and you know the system. Yep. Like I think that that could really be. I, I, I see that as a definite possibility. Yeah, I mean, because. Deshaun Kaiser wasn't it either. <laughs> like it's one of those things that, you know, we talk about not having inside linebacker. And again, thankfully we haven't had to rely on a backup quarterback, you know, for an extended amount of time, except for the 2017 season. But you know, it, it's, that's just one of those things that, you know, you, you need some kind of competent backup because we haven't had one since Matt Flynn. And I still miss that man. So yeah, <laughs> I, it's a, like, again, but if you want to go out and make some of those big splashes in free agency, there's other, there are going to be other positions that could use a whole lot of depth that are going to go unfilled, or they're just going to take shots on them in the draft and just hope for the best. But yeah, no, I agree with you completely. I'm a, I'm, I'm on the Littleton train all the way, just because again, like we finally can be like, good, put him there. We don't have to worry about inside linebacker for five minutes and, you know, at least hopefully and, uh, and see how that works. But Ken, it has been absolute phenomenal talking to you. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts, your insights regarding the salary cap of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, where can all of these wonderful people find you for all of your cap knowledge? Uh, I'm hanging out on Twitter, mostly. And uh, you can search Ken Ingles, which is so K-E-N-I-N-G-A-L-L-S, and you'll find me. Um, just breaking down, giving my opinions of where the Panthers are at, what they can reasonably do, not these wish lists. And, um, you know, I, I, I try and break it down to this is what I think we can 
realistically do and always answering questions. So if anyone has anything, you know, shoot my way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ken. Much appreciated. So go check out Ken and his math wizardry over on the Twitter and learn something. But let me know what you think down in the comments below about the Packers cap space. I wanted to bring a guy like Ken on because, you know, I, I will willingly admit that that is not one of my strong suits. So in an order or an effort to provide some well-rounded content around here, I wanted to make sure that you got what you wanted. So... Check Ken out. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy and all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout out and thank you to all the Patreon members at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom freaking fracking Grassy. And as always, Go Pack Go!